say about the girl's chest. That's why yeah. girls don't have hair on their chest. Yeah, you know, you know why girls didn't have hair on their chest in your eyes? Why not? I think we want to pick up where where Aunt Ruthie left off, my Aunt Ruthie McGowan. And uh, she was a wonderful woman. I, I, I love my aunt and uncle very much. Um, I, but I have to go back to your dad, my cousin Bill McGowan. I've known Bill my whole life. I, can, I don't know what life is like without him. I, I can just, ever since I can remember, I can remember Bill. And my first thought of Bill is, we were both in the playpen together. That's the first time I really yeah, remember him. He was in a, we were in a playpen, and I remember he had a blue, blue um, coveralls on with a little, uh, it's like suspenders that held him up, and they're trimmed in red. And that was the first time I can remember actually seeing Bill. I, I don't know how old we were, but I know it was off New Jersey Avenue. He lived there, off, it was a, back in an alley off New Jersey Avenue. I do remember that. That's where it was. Was that? That wasn't well, in the uh, inlet, was it? No, that was Boulevard Avenue. Boulevard. But this yeah. is New Jersey, and the reason why I remember is because I don't know what I had, but you had the same thing I did. I think it was the hooping cough, and I was over your house. Your, your parents decided to take care of me because we could hang out together while we both coughed our brains out, uh -huh. and I think I barfed on your dad's head. No. <laughs> I do. I, I do, and I always regretted that. I told him that. But So that was my, my first beginnings, and... Bill and I started school together. We were, went to Massachusetts Avenue School, and we used to run around with a little group of guys, and we thought that, that the schoolyard was so huge and big. Of course, when I saw it years later, I thought it was very small, but it was like a big area then. And we had a whole bunch of friends, with, kids we used to run around with, the whole gang running around doing all kinds of things, and um, we just had a lot of fun. But I want to go back to what my Ruthie was saying. She was talking about her family. And I do remember, I do know things. There's a fellow by the name of Dave Brill right now. He's the Levine family. Now, your grandmother, great grandmother, her name was Bella Levine before she got married. And of course, it became Bella Lyons. <coughs> and they, they lived in Philadelphia. And the Levines are a very interesting group of people. They're still there. And this fellow Brill, David Brill, lives over in Cherry Hill. I'll have to get his number for if you want him because uh, he'll send you the whole family tree that he's put together. And he, he needs to update our branch of the family, for all, all the Lions people. They, they, we haven't kept it up. Um, so I'll get that to whoever wants it. Um, I, have a, I do have a contact to how to reach him. But in any case, um, they came, Grandma's family came here from Russia, and uh, I don't know too much about... <laughs> Her, her husband that she married, Grandpa Lyons, um, his name was Joseph. But, they, uh, but she lived in Philadelphia, and they did have a restaurant. It was on Fifth Street. I remember your mother t talking about uh, they had a restaurant. It was on Fifth Street in Philadelphia. Do you know her name? No, but the, this David Brill knows exactly where the location was. But there are interesting people in the family. And if you go to Google, and you look up Google, look up George Levine, football coach. You'll find that he was a football coach for University of Tennessee, and he played football for, I think, University of Pennsylvania. And then he went on and became a football coach at the University of Pennsylvania and had winning seasons. So if you Google him, you'll find it. That was grandmom's, my, my great, my grandmother's, which would be your great grandmother's uh, brother. She had another brother by the name of Benny Levine. I remember going to his, I don't know whether it was his funeral or his commemoration, but they were firing guns over his grave. He, he was the uh, glider king for uh, gliders, and he, he had the record for the most loop-to-loop -loop in a glider. But he act, actually got killed in an airplane crash. Uh, it had nothing to do with gliders. He was very good with that. And um, I guess he was in the service or whatever because it, it was a military funeral. So he, he had some records. And then the Levines had a company called Levine Motor Company. And uh, they, they were in the car business. And the, there still was the Levine Motors. I don't know if it's still there or not. Then there was another one of the Levine family. Her name was Lil. 
she married a guy by the name of Blackman. Bill, you'll remember this. Blackman syrups. Blackman syrups were all over the place. They, at that time, they didn't have these oldie soda bottles. You went to a fountain, and they, they, they were all filled with syrups. And they put seltzer, they put the syrup in the glass with ice, and then they, they would put the seltzer in, and that was your soda. Uh, so it was all done different. And so she had mega bucks, little Blackman. So just a little bit about them. About her, her husband, uh, Joseph Lyons, which is your great-great-great-grandfather, um, he, I know he had, I know there was a street in Upper Darby named after him. He developed in Upper Darby uh, houses. I know he had things in Baltimore he was doing because he was always going there and my, um, he used to correspond to Grandmom. I think I saw some of his letters corresponding with her from Baltimore. Uh, they weren't married yet. And then, um, of course, Pensgrove we know about. He had uh, the movie theater he owned here? The Broad Theater. The Broad Theater, yeah. And uh, um, that's how he and Eva met Uncle George and married him, because he, he was up Uncle here. Uncle Lou. Uncle Lou, that's right. Sorry. And they lived right across the street from the movie house. That's right. And that's... Exactly. That, that house is gone now, and there's a 7-Eleven or one of those fast food things right next to the Italian restaurant in town there. But he, he died in his early 50s, and... Uh, it, he was with the New York Life, and I looked him up, and I lost uh, my my computer crashed, so I haven't got the information anymore. But in 1924, I believe, and they may have it if you if you go to New York Life and uh, inquire with them, they may be able to give you information. He was the, like the top salesman in the nation for New York Life. Um, he built, built a million dollar round table, whatever it was, and of course a million dollars in was like unbelievable because they were fish cake. Policies, five hundred dollars, a thousand bucks. I mean, that that was it. People weren't making more than twenty dollars a week salary. So, but um, in any case, he died, and uh, he was in the coal business, and he was in the real estate business. And he was in with a guy by the name of Cinderbrian. And before Grandmom died, she was staying at my parents' house, and she was really ticked off about this guy Cinderbrian because, well, he, that was one of the people. She lost all her money. Uh, in, in the bank that Grandpa had, but the Cinderbrian guy took over the business. It was a young guy that her husband had taken in the business with him, and he ended up getting the whole business. Women didn't work then or have any business ac acumen at that time. So he ended up getting the whole business, and she, in the end, was very bitter about it because she, she really struggled, and she never complained all the years until almost the end, and she, she was a little bitter about it. And... Uh, Anyway, Cindy Brian, as far as I know, up until a couple of years ago, that, that uh, real estate bu business was still there and was started by your great grandfather. Did have a coal company, that, that's true. Um, he was into a lot of different things. And I, my father used to tell me that he was on the verge of uh, making big bucks when, when he died. And he just died. And uh, then uh, he also had a lot of gold coins. And his brother was going to help gran my grandmother, Bella Lyons, to get dispose of him, get money. He took off and never saw him again. Aunt Martha told me that. Yeah. And that was before she died, which was only a couple of years ago. So I just found that out recently. So I just thought you guys would like to know that little bit of background um, in that part of the family. And a little bit I do know about uh, uh, Joseph Lyons. Um, because he, he died long before I was born. And they're buried right out in, um, <clears throat> I guess it's about a half, not too far from the Hamilton Mall, off of 322, is it? Is that where they were? Yeah, it's, it's Rod Rod of Sholem Cemetery, I believe it is. They're all out there. Uh, my parents are there, my, my grand, those, those grandparents are there. My, my father's mother is also buried there. That's Cardiff. Cardiff, I guess it is, yeah. Right at the Cardiff Circle. Yeah, and that's where I'm going to get laid down. Mm. It's, I remember my father picking out the plot that was like almost 50 years ago. So it's nice and high. It, won't, it drains right here. You'll mm -hmm. be laying in water. I forgot all about that until recently. I never thought about it all these years until then. Well, yeah. at least I won't be laying in water. And, and, and uh, your wife's mother? 
Oh, yeah. He's buried there also. Sandy's mother's buried there. That's correct. And Molly's mother. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Oh, down there. Mm -hmm. They're all in the mm -hmm. same spot. They're I'm all pretty close. Matter of fact, I'm in the process now of uh, getting the tombstones cleaned up and fixed up. You know, all of them, uh, and be done with it. And because uh, I don't know when it'll be done again. And you remember sitting on the floor in uh, one of Grandma Bella's uh, apartments and playing canasta with her? Yeah, we used to cheat her all the time. She would cheat, but you know what? She really taught us how to play cards. She used to, she used to play with us all the time, steal the bundle she started with. And uh, um, first of all, it was during the Depression. We were little. Nobody had any money. You heard any, your grandmother say they didn't have anything. They didn't. They did live together. Um, and that place on Adelphi, that Adelphia Street, that's another thing. Her, uh, your great-grandfather, Joseph Lyons, built that whole street, Adelphia Street. It was all beautiful brick buildings that had a, sea, a view of the ocean at the inlet. It was really nice. And mm -hmm. again, it doesn't exist anymore. But uh, that's where they, they lived. They all came in because nobody had any money. So I used to think we had these big Thanksgiving feasts. Well, I found that from my mother years later, what I thought was big Thanksgiving feast. Billy, Bill was there with his mom and dad. Pat's, my cousin Patsy was there with her mom and dad. Martha and Johnny were there. Aunt Claire. Uh, Aunt Claire there. Pete. And guess what? They, I found that it was like a 10-pound chicken. Uh -huh. But they made a lot of potatoes and a lot of stuffing. And we, I thought it was a big feast. They had everything. We, we didn't know we were poor. We just had a good time. I just, we just had a good time, no problem. At that time, you, you didn't have to worry about people breaking into your house or anything else and robbing people. Nobody had any money, but they weren't out robbing because they used to leave milk at your doorstep. And that was a horse, horse drawing, too. And that was interesting about the horse drawing because the guy didn't even have to know the route. The, the horse knew the route, and he stopped every place. You just get out and give them what they want. <laughs> so you, you could be stupid. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that the horse knew everything. And yeah, with Grandma, Grandma Lyons, we used to play casino with her. Casino, yeah. And, and she had, she wore glasses, and if you want to know what Grandmom had, all you had to do was look, look at her, her and you could see the cards in her glasses. <laughs> and Grandmom used to, uh, at, at Christmas time or whatever, she would give us uh, bean bags and with seeds from uh, grapefruits and oranges. And ragdolls. Uh, and ragdolls, and then she'd also give us uh, little jars of money, pennies. Pennies, Indian heads. Right, Indian heads in there. Oh, uh, God, those, uh, those Indian heads, if only I had them back. Yeah. We'll have to tell them what we used to do with those things. They, we were pretty good coin collectors. I'm going to skip ahead until, well, Bill, Bill was much better than me. He was really at it. But I'll never forget, I started with, in Belmore Park. I lived in Belmore Park. It was during the Second World War in New Jersey. And uh, I decided to go in the, in the stamps. So I, I spent like half a morning laying all these stamps out. My mother had the windows open. And uh, she comes back and she opens the door and all my stamps blew all over the house. <laughs> I said, Screw it, that's the end of the stamps. I'm not, no more stamps, I went into coins. And I was very good at getting coins, not like your, your dad did. He, he was more aggressive than me and I did it more. But we both did the same thing in the end and we regret it. You wanna tell him what we did? Yeah, we spent, uh, like, I got a lot of coins when I worked in, when I was in high school, I worked at Riverview Beach Park, and I got a lot of coins from the cashier at the Penny Arcade. Mm -hmm. She'd save the old coins for me, and I'd give her, you know, the modern-day coins for it. Well, that was all well and good. I had, had books, and I had all these coins in it, until my depression came along in high school, and wintertime would come, and there was no money coming in, and I'd take a coin at a time, and for a quarter, a date now, I could go to a, one of the Salem High School basketball games. And my whole quarter collection whoosh, went right. to the basketball game. I did game. the same thing. Yeah. And, we, and guess what? They went at, at just whatever a quarter value was worth. There was no, no yeah. domestic value involved. Those darn things, I know they were worth a lot. You can't imagine. I buy um, those Barber head, Standing Liberty headquarters, a couple of them in my typeset collection. Over two hundred dollars I paid for them. one quarter. One quarter. They were all over the place. But they're really, really good condition. So you can imagine oh, if they were good condition they were. then, and if you still had them, each one's worth over two hundred bucks now. Yeah. We still have that our coin collections, don't we? You still have yours, I, though. I have. Yeah, I have. 
I have some from my father. My father was in the taxi business, and uh, to go any place in Atlantic City at this one particular time he was collecting, I and mean, this has to be in the 50s, late 40s, early 50s, it was 50 cents. He'd just, he'd just take a cab and go. But anything that was older than him, which he was born in 1909, he saved. I still have them. I still have all the ones that yeah. I got from you. Yeah, mm. still I still got some standing Liberty quarters, but all the ones I have have been new ones. I never, I never had any new ones. But uh, I still, I keep the uh, the quarters now. The uh, state quarters. Yeah. Montana's coming out Wednesday, by the way. We got it already. You did. Yeah, well, I, 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 you got one. Just picked up the other day. Uh,